Who's that? <laughs> yeah, it is. Good morning. One more time. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you sounded great. You sounded fantastic. Indeed, this is a great morning to come here together to be reminded that in our faith with Jesus Christ that we're not alone, that we can gather to collectively to know that we are working together for God's kingdom through Jesus Christ. And that one of the ways that we're reminded of that is coming each week for worship. I'd like for you to take note of the different announcements. Uh, first is that uh, we want to welcome people that are watching us on YouTube and Facebook. We are honored that you're following us, and we just pray that whatever goes on uh, through this congregation, that you'll feel comfortable in being involved. On December 1st, after worship service, we'll have a congregational meeting. And so uh, be sure to stay for that. That shouldn't last long. Also, I see many people are providing food for uh, the uh, Von Trent. Uh, there's a box over there uh, that uh, Leanne has set up. I'm sorry I don't remember all the items that uh, they're wanting. I think they're wanting... Um, some stuff for uh, cornbread mix, and, and again, I don't remember all that uh, they have set up. Also, that we're going to have a prayer for Bonner Springs. Uh, we uh, have been we started that last summer, and then as it got the weather got cooler, uh, and now I was going on vacation, we took a break. But we're going to start back up, but we're not going to meet down in the park. Obviously, uh, we'll be meeting at the fuel house be Tuesday at 4 o'clock, and so I hope that you'll feel uh, uh, comfortable in coming to be a part of that. It's, it's truly a very meaningful time. Also, uh, uh, this Tuesday is uh, the Bible study for the men's group. Then also, uh, just as a reminder, I've been mentioning this over the past few weeks, is that uh, I'll be working less in the office here and I'm going to be spending more time out in the public getting to meet more people. And I'll be like at Kobe's, uh, at uh, Third Space in the Fuel House. And I'll just be bringing my laptop and other materials to wherever I decide to go. Plus, uh, uh, hopefully this week, I can start uh, doing uh, door, more door knocking. And I'll be talking more about this at the beginning of next year in January. So are there other announcements that need to be made? Oh, there is one announcement that um, in terms of uh, the deadline for the December 1st bulletin, it's Tuesday, November 26th, not Wednesday. So just want you to be aware of that. If there are no other, uh, so our scripture verse that we're going to be focused on uh, this day is Numbers 23 and it should be up on, or nine, I'm sorry, 917, up on the screen. So let's now have a few moments of silence. You can concentrate on the scripture or just simply be in prayer. Amen. 
And now we'll have some time for the prelude.
the woman had heard about Jesus and came up behind him under cover of the crowd and touched his cloak. For if I can only touch his clothes, she kept saying, I will be all right. Mark 5. How many of you have heard the phrase, if you are at the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on? Well, I've decided through the last couple months that that's not enough to use that rope. So I am changing that saying. If you are at the end of your peace, your strength, your ability to go on, reach out and touch Jesus' cloak. You don't have to hang on because he will know you are there and give you peace and succor. The woman had been suffering for years. She sought the expertise of many doctors and none could help her. She had heard that Jesus was coming and she thought, what could it hurt to touch him? No one will see me in this crowd. But as soon as she reached out to him, he reached out to her. That should comfort all of us. However, she had to reach first and believe that he could provide the help she needed. Let us come to worship with the feeling that we can reach out to Jesus anytime and we will always feel his power coming to us. We serve a great God. Let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, help us to remember when we feel that life is heavy and it is hard to face the day that we need to forget our worry and reach out to touch Jesus. The power of the Comforter, as Jesus called the Holy Spirit, is ours for the asking. Help all of us to be active enough to reach out to Jesus. Amen. Please stand. Join the everlasting, everlasting song, 
ping song and crown him Lord of all. You may be seated. Oh, he had to throw in that extra strum there. So we come to our time of concerns and joys of the church. And so, first of all, we we'll pray for uh, Carolyn Jeffrey's niece, Andrea Harding Bullock. Uh, she's starting chemo uh, for her non Hopkins lymphoma. Pray for healing and destroying cancer. And so we pray and hope that that's uh, nothing serious. My sister had that. And they said as long as they stay on top of it, she'll be fine for the rest of her life. Uh, then also, George, you want to give us an update about yourself? <laughs> Are you eating a little more? Okay. So, I think it's a prayer of joy, but it's also a prayer of concern. Number one is that George, we talked earlier, uh, that he's uh, gaining more strength. Uh, but, you know, the, he still has uh, his foot issues in terms of healing uh, for that to heal. Be sure to keep Alice in your thoughts and prayers in regards to uh, her chemo, uh, not chemo, but radiation treatments chemo. and chemo. And so we'll pray to that, uh, God's healing spirit's working through all that. I think God's healing spirit's already working through you already by the fact that you're not in pain and you have a, a, a sense of God's peace. And so that is a concern in terms of that she's freed of cancer, but also it's a joy that she feels God, she's opened up to God's peace. And then uh, before I call on somebody, uh, last night, um, I'm going to go ahead and say Mormon, <laughs> saying uh, the church of the, I guess I'm going to say the church of the Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ is a mouthful of words. But that last night, they, uh, there was a concert, and it was fantastic. Uh, there, there was some serious talent here. And so um, they, they seemed to enjoy it because some of them talked about, well, can we come back again? So um, for those of you who were unable to come last night, I would encourage you, if we have it again, um, uh, to, be, uh, to come and experience uh, the beautiful witness that they provided. And then I am to call on Gayla. I'll just come up here. It's easier. Uh, I just think we have a, a big joy with the shoe boxes. More came in, and I think the count's over 80 now. I'll have to recount them. But uh, it's quite a joy to celebrate. And then I was approached about the fact that we didn't pray last week. We did pray, but it was over a video, so it wasn't quite as personal touch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray again. I'm gonna read a prayer that uh, I found, and uh, it's specific to our shoe boxes. So this is a prayer of dedication for them. And thank you guys for all your input. Loving God, we pray for your blessing of the shoe boxes for the mission of Samar Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. Loving God, we ask for your blessing. We pray for the hurting children and the families whose lives will be impacted by these boxes and the contents that we've packed with love. Loving God, we pray for your touch of compassion. We pray especially that through these gifts, the hearts of the children and their families will be open to your love and the message of your grace through Jesus Christ. Loving God, we pray for your grace to be known. We pray for children and families who are suffering in the desperate circumstances of poverty, sickness, war, that you will meet their physical needs. Providing God, we pray for your bounty. We pray that these shoe boxes will be useful tools to open doors for the proclamation of the gospel. Providing God, we pray for open doors. We pray also for all those who are participating in some way in the mission of Operation Christmas Child and for the process of collecting, processing, 
transporting and delivering of the boxes to their destinations. Providing God, we pray that you would open the way for all of these shoe boxes to be delivered to people who need to know of your love for them. To this end, in faith, we ask for your bless blessing. Amen. And we are going to pay for 10 of them uh, separately so that we can track them. So we'll kind of keep an eye on where those go. And uh, that'll give you some idea where they, they'll be delivered to. Thank you. That is awesome. 80, over 80 boxes. And thank you, Gayla, for your leadership. You did great. One thing I've been meaning to bring up and just never remember is that something else that is thriving here at First Christian Church is the blessing box. Uh, did it start in February or March? February. And I'm going to be super honest is that I wasn't sure that this was going to go well. I've shared this with people. You know, we've got um, Christ First, you know, with their food pantry, uh, Von Trent, uh, Feed His Lambs, and then I believe Fellowship West. And this has been wildly successful. It's been wildly successful that, number one, is uh, people here in the church have been, you've been consistently generous. And so thank you. God bless you for that. Second, we've had volunteers that have been uh, unfailing in making sure that the box is filled and it's not falling on just one person. To me, this is part of what church is all about. And then three is that we've got support from the community. Uh, there's been on four occasions where uh, uh, anonymous people dropped $100 in the prayer box. And then also uh, folks have just simply stopped by and filled it up. We don't know who, again, they're anonymous. So we have something really amazing going on. And so I, that, I just want you to, some of you may not be aware of some of these details, but this is the reason why we need to give thanks and praise to God and to pray that uh, this is truly making a, a difference, well, we know it's making a difference in people's lives. And I believe that the reason as to why this has been so successful is that compared to the other food ministries in this community, uh, that they are, their hours are limited, their days are limited, but here, this is 24-7, 365. So God bless all of you. I think probably all of you have been involved one way or another. So thank you very much. Let us now bow for a word of prayer. Loving God, we're just so grateful for the different ways that you do uh, open up our eyes as to ways that we can serve you here in this community. I pray, dear God, as we continue with the Next Step Ministries, that our eyes will be opened up as to ways that we can truly have impact on people's lives through the homebound ministries, knowing that there are people that are truly lonely, people who are being neglected. And so I pray, dear God, that we will be able to identify those folks. We pray, dear God, for the, the support group ministry, that in January we'll be starting up the chronic pain support group, knowing that there's people that right now are just, they cannot get rid of their pain. That pain just never stops, and they've, they've sought out help. And we pray that in just a humble and non-authoritative way, but as a supportive and loving way and a prayerful way, that we can be available to those that help them deal with their chronic pain. We pray, dear God, for the prayer and faith group. We pray, dear God, that they'll be able to see ways that we can reach out into the community and show who Jesus Christ is and be faithful to the purpose that you've given this church, and that is to spread Christ's love. So help us, dear God, also remember right now the, the concerns that have been shared with us of people going through different medical issues. This church, their God, is amazing. They don't really fully understand it as to how they truly do care for people because they are humble people, and I'm grateful for that. For, dear God, it, it, ultimately, that love that we have is not ours. It's yours. 
That grace that we have is not ours, it's yours. That generosity that we have is not ours, it's yours. So help us understand and never forget that these are gifts that you've given to us. So may we use them in the ways that you ask, knowing that it will make a difference in other people's lives as well as our own. Help us remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy sake, in the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is Numbers 9, 15 through 23. It's on page 222 in the Pew Bibles. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted, in the morning they set out. Whenever by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. 
but when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. Bless the reading of the word. Thank you, Sheila. And I really should not call the clouds of protection for today's sermon title. It's really about clouds of guidance. So I want to you know, set the tone that this is really about clouds of God's guidance. So how many of you, when you were a child, whether you were standing or you laid down on the ground, looked up in the sky and that you tried to imagine that you saw a dog or a deer or a rhinoceros, I made that one up, or, or uh, something else. And do you remember the first time that when you saw a, a, a cloud formation that you were just absolutely moved by its beauty? Or do you remember uh, getting scared when the clouds began to move fast or dark flashing lightning, and roaring thunder. In elementary school, in the, the, the science section, we would learn about the names of the different cloud formations. Stratus, Cirrus, Cumulus, Altostratus, Stratus Cumulus, and Nimbostratus. But then something happened. We became adults. And as adults, including yours truly, we begin to become oblivious to the clouds. Now, we might say, oh, this is a cloudy day, but did we even look up? We just simply knew because we didn't have, there was no sunshine. Now, or we might say on occasion, oh, it's a, the sky is blue and there's no cloud in sight. But the truth is, is that for probably most of us, we don't pay any attention to the clouds. Clouds certainly are important. They provide shade and precipitation. For some folks, if there are multiple days of cloudiness, they experience what's called SADS, seasonal affect disorder, and that's when people, uh, uh, this disorder uh, means that they are uh, experiencing sadness and depression. And that in some, I don't think they so much do this anymore, but that in movies and in cartoons and television shows, when they show heaven, is that it's in the clouds. And have you ever thought that, that how these people, when they're in the clouds, that they're walking and not falling through? So these are some of the ways that we think about clouds. Now, I'm not going to go through all the reference in Scripture uh, to clouds, but in the first kings, the clouds were seen as life-giving because of the rain and shade that it provides. In uh, Mark 9-7, the voice of God was heard from the clouds. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9, clouds blocked out the view when Jesus was ascending to earth, when Jesus had departed. Now, in our text, to understand the background of what led up to today's Bible reading is that the Israelites had been freed from Egyptian slavery. The Israelites had cried and prayed for liberation, and finally they were released. And yet, the Israelites were not prepared. They had not anticipated the difficulty of starting over. There were times in which there was no food, water, or permanent shelter. The Israelites were in a strange land, wandering towards an unknown destination. There was backlash that, uh, towards Moses because he was the chosen leader by God to lead the Israelites to the land of King, to the promised land, and that with God's help, 
Moses was able to help them start their lives over. Our reading begins today in which it says, On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, was set up and the clouds covered it. So, tabernacle, you might occasionally see some church identify itself as being a tabernacle. Tabernacle. But that's really, and I'm not being disrespectful, but that's not really what the, a tabernacle is. A tabernacle, at least from a, from a biblical sense, is one where it was a portable sanctuary that, that was used during the wilderness years as they were heading towards the promised land. Scripture then goes on to tell in today's text that the clouds above the tabernacle look like fire. And verse 17 states that whenever the clouds left it and moved, the Israelites followed it. Once it stopped, they set up camp. In verse 19, the Israelites obey God by never leaving until the clouds moved. In verses 21 and 22, it tells that sometimes they might be there for weeks at a particular site because the cloud had not moved, and then other times they might be at a particular location for one day because the cloud started to move again. And as I mentioned earlier, that the title today's uh, 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 sermon is guided by God. And it, I should have said that it is guided by God. Yes, Moses was the human leader leading the Israelites to their new home. Moses had no idea where the new permanent settlement was located. Henceforth, he had no idea of where uh, to lead the Israelites to their place. The verses that we hear today tells of how God instructed Moses of when to travel or when to, and when to stop. Moses and the Israelites, in an unusual way, was guided by God through clouds. Now, throughout Barb and I's courtship and marriage, we love to hike. Now, we've been on all kinds of trails. We've been on short, paved, well-marked trails that were just incredibly boring. Then we've been on other trails that were rugged. It was challenging. It was long and spectacularly beautiful and worth every minute. Many times when we've been in places where we've never been to, such as like when we were on our western trip, when we spent a lot of time hiking in Utah. When Barbara and I enter a trail, and I think it's true for any of us, is that we assume that it's going to be well marked. Well, I don't know how many of you are hikers, but that is just not always true. We've been on some trails that were poorly marked or incorrectly marked, and that we, you know, we come up to a fork and it's like there's no, not telling us, you know, what the particular uh, destinations are, and so we have to guess, and so then we get on the wrong uh, path. And we've actually been on times where we've taken a path and it led to a dead end. Other times we've been on trails where it is uh, marked perfectly in terms of guiding us. And so you can think of other ways of how we are guided in our everyday lives, whether we're talking about spiritually or in, in practical ways. A line in the Lord's Prayer is, lead us not to temptation. Maybe you could even guide that by saying, guide us not into temptation. We are asking for guidance every day from the Lord. When we have meetings uh, here in this church or groups meet, we often ask for God's guidance. That's one of the things I hear in prayers, 
uh, that people will say in the church, God, help guide us as a church. Help guide our groups. Help guide our ministries. Like Moses, as Jesus' disciples, we have to humil a humility to admit that we are uncertain, doubtful, scared, and unknowing what direction to travel in our personal lives and as a congregation. In particular, we pray for God's guidance at First Christian. We understand that we have left the homeland of the past that have become predictable. And like the Israelites, we are traveling to a new way of being church. One of the lines that I use at one church many times that I haven't here, or really even in recent years, is I would say that this is not my church, this is not your church, that this is God's church. And in fact, one of the people here in this church uh, congregation uh, reminds us of that, that this is God's church. And that is why we seek out God's guidance, which is then given to us through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, we begin to see how God is guiding First Christian to find the resources, partnership, and courage to reach out to Bonner Springs and beyond. The idea of God placing clouds over us to guide First Christian is not something that's theoretical, but that is real and practical. In preparing the sermon, I thought of how God sent people into my life to provide guidance. My parents, teachers, siblings, friends, co-workers, scripture, Bible, and I'm sure there's other ways that I've overlooked. The promise of God's guidance for first Christian and all people comes through, ultimately, the risen and living Jesus Christ. We have to do more than believe in the promise of God's guidance. We have to commit, literally, we have to commit. If you believe, then we, the next step is that we commit to giving all of our heart, mind, body, and soul to Christ. That we're like Moses and, and, and the Israelites did in inviting God to lead us to the promised land for our personal lives, for this church, community, nation, and world. Let us now pray. Loving God, we sometimes forget, or maybe we even think we know more than what we really do, of how we can get from one place to another. But we know that over and over again that you have led us in the right way, in a way that is far more fulfilling and satisfying and meaningful than whatever path we choose. And indeed, dear God, that's the message that we have to share to this community, that, that people are not alone. They don't have to figure everything out. Just like the Israelites tried at first to figure things out and many times would be disobedient, but that one, whenever they were obedient, did they begin to find the path to the land of Canaan, the promised land. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
I think one of the reasons as to why we find communion time to be so powerful is that we're reminded during perhaps the uh, er, week earlier as to how God guided us through a particular situation. Or that we're reminded as to how God got us through other times in our lives or how we need God, how we need, I should not say God, but say Jesus has been guiding us and leading us. And again, we all can confess, I believe I can say this safely, that at times we forget to seek out Christ's guidance. And that's why I think it's beautiful that we come here to this communion table to be reminded that the ultimate guide in our lives is Jesus Christ. And that's why it's important for us to spend time being reminded as to who he is. For the last time that he had a meal with his disciples before his arrest, that he took, they had a meal. And before the meal began, he lifted up a loaf of bread and broke it in half. He says, this represents my broken body. Whenever you eat of it, do so in memory of me. Likewise, he took a cup of wine and he blessed it. And he says, this cup represents the blood that's been shed for all of humankind for the forgiveness of sins. This is the covenant, this is the promise I make, that I will be with you until the end of time. Let us pray. Father, we are at your table under your protection. Help us continue to remember as we take this bread that it represents your body. Help us continue to do that as we take this bread. Heavenly Father, we know that the only way for us to complete our mission to share Christ's love is for you to dwell in our midst and so that we can be guided by the Holy Spirit. Now as we dwell here in your house, we drink in your presence, we find peace and rest in your arms. We believe in your name and we ask for your healing and your grace and believe in your trust and love. We thank you for your sacrifice and we receive all that you have for us. We ask for restoration. We need your touch. We wait on you, our Savior, our friend, our hope. We love you, and we pray in your holy name. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you with your love and with your giving us the ability to support ourselves financially. We thank you for the giving of that love that we may take this money and use it in the ability to support your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us now stand for our final hymn. Church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord? She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to. Just as a quick reminder for those that are serving on the church board, uh, that we have a meeting right after worship in the, what I call the boardroom, uh, the Tuesday morning women's worship group. Anyway, uh, not worship, a study group. So let us now bow our heads for a word of prayer. 
May we indeed, dear God, trust in your guidance. We know that when we have trusted in your guidance, it's made all the difference. And so I pray, dear God, as we go out this week, we will see the ways that you're leading us to spread your love, to help people love Jesus, to help us work together, to help us be able to serve others and to reach the world. And together we all say, Amen.